Hello fellow Brawlers, I'm Carlos Time, and it is time for version 12 of the Brawl Stars tier list. Now as always guys, the tier list is brought to you in partnership with BrawlStats.com and the Brawl Stats app on iOS and Android. You can use it to check your progress in game and find out the best brawlers for every map in the game. Now along with working on this tier list, my high level collaborators are also working together to help me update the recommended brawlers that you'll find in the app for like every map, so uh, you definitely will want to download it if you haven't already. Okay guys, let's go ahead and start off by talking about the gem grab tier list. First off, we've got Rosa being added into the S tier. Arguably, she's the best tank in the game. Her impressive range and game-changing super allows for her to win almost every single 1v1 interaction, as long as she's able to get close to a brawler. She has so much HP and her super that actually allows her to do that a lot of the time. With gem grab's landscape being shaped by Jean, Rosa actually represents one of the few lane options that can be played on the side that can pressure Jean with aggression and she often also represents a non-pullable target and that makes her very strong. Terra is moving from the A tier into the S tier and with Rosa's dominance, Terra represents an effective counter as a tank slayer, benefiting from her ability to cycle her super off of high health targets over and over and over again. Next we've got Bo moving from the S tier down into the A tier. Now Bo He's, uh, he's just completely outclassed by Jean as being one of the, you know, Jean's like one of the best gem carriers in the game because of how quick, how long his range is and how quickly he can turn around a gem grab match. Now he still has really powerful shots and a really long range and that does make him a great option, just not enough to classify him as the S tier. We also have Jesse moving from the A tier down into the B tier. Now in case you've forgotten, Jesse, she is still in the game and yes, she's still viable in gem grab as a gem carrier, but only good enough to warrant B tier. Carl just does such, he's so strong right now. Carl's really great and his attack can easily wipe her turret out very quickly and uh, she just does not survive very well against the gene either. BB is being added into the B tier for the first time. BB is arguably the most balanced new brawler being added to the game. Uh, with her speed and when she has her super as well as her ability to like knock back brawlers with her main attack she is a viable option in gem grab one thing you'll notice with bb in today's tier list is that her star power is so much stronger than all the other brawlers star powers uh that that she often places in a different tier if you do not have her star power. However, in gem grab, she is B tier, whether or not you do have her star power. Rico is also moving from the A tier down into the B tier. With the meta centralized around turnarounds, lane brawlers like Rico that play on the sides need to do everything that they can in order to survive. And, uh, well, Rico, or Thicko, I mean, sorry, not Thicko, he's Squisho. He just can't hold his own against Carl's DPS or Jean's ultimate pull. It's just not as great of an option as he used to be. Piper's going from the F tier up into the B tier. With her ability to pinch brawlers that are in the lanes and stay out of range from turnaround supers from Jean or Terra, and a more relevant, powerful 4-bomb super, then <laughs> she's able to flee from incoming threats, which makes her a, a, a decent option once again in gem grab. Uh, Mortis is being removed from the A tier to the non-competitive tier list. There's just a lot more tanky options like Rosa, and that just means that his viability has decreased quite a bit. Okay guys, up next we've got the showdown tier list, the solo showdown tier list. Starting off, we've got Rosa in the S tier. She was just born in the jungle, guys. To her, Showdown is a playground. Once she has her super, she zones out enemies, keeps them back from her, claiming territory as her own, and even after her nerf, she's still incredibly strong. BB's being added into the A tier. Now with BB's star power, her quick speed allows her to close the gap against those ranged brawlers and also flee from enemies as well. She benefits from having that quick ability to like access boxes, uh, contest them with the pierce damage, break them open with high DPS and when a pinch she can actually use her ability to knock brawlers back. Her star power once again offers more than most other brawler star powers in the game and as such I'll add that without her star power she is B tier in solo showdown. Piper is getting a good upgrade from the F tier up into the A tier, the F tier being the non-competitive tier. With a lot of maps being a little bit more wide open now in the rotation, Piper has the ultimate range and she can challenge really any brawlers that approach her if you have the skill to hit her shots. With a lot of threats surrounding brawlers in Showdown, uh, people are a little bit more cautious around Pi uh, Piper's range because she's able to deal so much damage with a single shot. Um, and that leads brawlers, if they do get hit, to being susceptible to backstabbing and her recent buff uh, actually serves as a great means of escape from backstabbers as well. Up next, we've got the duo Showdown tier list because 
Yep, people play duos as well. <laughs> Rose is starting in the A tier for Duo Showdown. She's a pretty great option, especially in Duo Showdown, because her super makes it more likely that if a teammate dies, she'll actually stay alive long enough for them to respawn. Now, without the ability to contribute to long-range combat, Rosa remains a little bit more balanced in the A tier here. BB's also being added into the A tier. Similar to Solo Showdown, BB's knockback prevents brawlers from closing in, while her speed allows her to pressure enemies and flee from conflict. Once again, without her star power, she would be in the B tier. Spike is moving from the S tier, skipping down the A tier and landing in the B tier. Spike's slow reload, his shorter range, and his low health just makes him more vulnerable in this mode where you're going to be surrounded by enemies a lot more frequently and with increased prevalence of counters such as Jean or Carl he's just not nearly as dominant as he once was. Jesse is being removed from the B tier into the non-competitive tier list. Her slow shot speed, low recharge and uh, her low impact basically just makes it so that Jesse is less viable competitively. Uh, her turret is quite often vulnerable from multiple directions against multiple enemy brawlers, and she's just not as good as uh, she used to be. And she's just not the best competitive option for Duo Showdown. Okay guys, up next we've got the Heist tier list, and we've had a lot of changes in Heist. Carl's going from the non-ranked position, skipping the B tier, skipping the A tier, skipping the S tier, and going straight to the S, the golden S tier, replacing Bull. Now, his first buff increased his shot speed, and his second buff increased the, the debuff time, and Carl went from being completely underwhelming to being arguably the strongest brawler in the game. With very high ranged damage and easy to land shots, Carl's main attack controls the field at a distance and decimates brawlers up close. Rose is being added into the S tier. Heist is a tank kingdom right now, and Rosa is no exception. She is the queen of the tanks, and she represents a threat that you absolutely cannot ignore. But dealing with her often means loading her game-breaking super, and that dominance only snowballs from there. Barley's moving from the S tier down into the A tier, and with Rosa's sustained aggressive dominance, strategies and heists have kind of shifted from being like control-based to like, I guess, aggression-based. And while Barley's still a strong option, his power now lies in his ability to like chip brawlers, chip at those tanks, and zone them, kind of keep them away from the safe, rather than like his overwhelmingly strong control, which is why you used to play him in Heist before. This is especially true against Carl, who can now chip behind walls and like super in on those low health brawlers like Barley and just like get rid of them really quickly. Colt's also moving from the S tier down to the A tier. Colt earns respect for his huge DPS potential against those tanks and against the safe, but there's just no denying that the meta is plagued by these aggressive tanks, and Colt really does have a difficult time creating that, like, sustaining offense, being there for a while, and having that consistency. He's often forced to play defensively, and it's really easy to, like, dodge a Colt shot as a tank when you're really up close to him, uh, and that means that other brawlers just are more viable. Still a great option, just not the best. El Primo's moving from the B tier up into the A tier. With his ability to cycle his super off other tanks, he represents, he's like the only tank that can actually, like, subdue all other tanks in a 1v1. His one weakness is his short range, because it is so short. But, with tanks being less prevalent in heist, that's a lot less of a problem for El Primo now. Pam's moving from the A tier down into the B tier. Now, Pam's control-oriented approach just is not going to cut it in the meta where you, you can't control. <laughs> tanks often bulldoze over her. She's just not as good right now, especially because she did have a decrease in DPS. Not the most recent balance change, but the, the, but the changes before that. Up next is Rico moving from the A tier down into the B tier. With brawlers like Carl that, like have a, a lot of mobility and have so much health and also have like a pretty decent range. Um, well, low health brawlers like uh, like Rico, they just they just struggle. Um, adding a nail to the coffin, a few map changes like the removal of corner case and the addition of side story have actually contributed to Rico's lack of viability. Crow is moving from the A tier down into the B tier. Crow thrives when there are low health brawlers such as like throwers. Um, and in this meta, while low health brawlers are still good, some of them are, they just aren't nearly as dominant as what they were, and due to aggressive tank strategies like Carl and, you know, Bull and Rosa all working together, uh, well, 
Crow is just he, just, he just struggles a lot more. Dynamite is also moving from the A tier down into the B tier. With really good damage, control, and his ability to like defend himself in close range, Barley is actually considered a stronger thrower than Dynamite in all modes right now. B tier is definitely accurate for Dynamite right now because that does distinguish him from uh, the stronger thrower option, which is Barley. Shelly's moving from the non-ranked position up into the B tier. Shelly is the most direct counter to tanks. And as more tanks are being used and less control options are becoming prevalent, Shelly becomes a little bit more viable in Heist, despite her not actually being made very well for Heist. As such, she's a good option and she can be used in the Heist. Piper is moving from the non-ranked position up into the B tier. She's really not that great in Heist, except for a couple of those long-range maps where she seems to be competitive. Because of her map dependency, she is in the B tier. BB is being added into the B tier. With uh, BB's ability to basically play whackable. That's right, guys. You heard you heard it here first. Whackable. BB's able to keep enemy brawlers pushed back, and uh, even with her star power, she's able to actually go on the offensive a lot faster than most brawlers. That, in addition to the fact that she has a pretty high DPS on the safe, actually allows her to be a pretty decent brawler. That said. She's certainly not more viable than B tier, and even without her star power, I would still consider her B tier as well. Okay guys, up next we've got Brawl Ball. Starting off, we got Jean going from the A tier up into the S tier. Now Jean's ability to isolate low health targets and pull them through walls really cannot be undervalued. He is incredibly strong, especially if you're able to land his super. Uh, he's able to actually like create 3v2 situations by being able to pull anybody from across the map, basically. And he's definitely a super solid option in this mode. Rosa is being added into the S tier. In a lot of ways, Rosa shapes the Brawl Ball landscape in today's meta. Without an enemy brawler that has knockback, Rosa can score a goal with ease as long as she has her super. And with Brawl Ball, in which like, all brawlers are constantly moving across the map. There's basically no way to avoid her reach. There's so many walls. She's just very strong. Shelly is moving from the B tier up into the A tier. And the biggest reason why is because Rosa just has so much strong viability in Brawl Ball that Shelly has become one of the best options to counter her and uh, also to counter other tanks, which is why Shelly is so great. Jesse's moving from the S tier into the A tier with more aggressive strategies. Jesse's delicate control style approach just doesn't pack enough punch to prevent these, these quick goal opportunities that these tanks kind of focus on doing. Strategies that focus on burst damage or like turnaround ability like Jean or Terra's super are often a lot more impactful in the current meta than, than Jesse's consistent controlled style. BB's being added into the A tier. Man, BB is fast, and with that speed, she makes a brilliant ball carrier. This allows her to execute quick goal opportunities, and she can also knock the ball out of enemy brawler's hands with her home run bat, with her regular attack. Her one caveat is that she loses her home run, like, knockback ability when she's actually kicking the ball, making her more vulnerable to her delayed shot speed. Without her star power, she is a B-tier brawler in Brawl Ball, because her star power, once again, is so much stronger than other brawlers' star powers. Next, we have Pam moving from the A-tier into the B-tier. Similar to heist, Pam often just gets run over in Brawl Ball. She loads other brawlers uh, supers, and there are less maps now in the rotation where she actually does a decent job at. Leon is moving from the A tier into the B tier. The biggest difficulty with Leon is the fact that there are so many brawlers that have so much health on the field, and while Leon does deal a lot of burst damage, he does have a slow reload speed, and that makes it difficult for him to actually deal with those tanks. Crow's moving from the A tier down to the B tier. Crow's DPS just... It's not sufficient to deter these more aggressive comps. He tends to benefit from sustained control, followed by like a high impact super to create a 3v2 opportunity. But right now, Brawl Ball is very fast paced and teams are often focused about trying to get a quick goal as fast as they possibly can. And that means that uh, Kuro just doesn't have enough time to actually really thrive. Barley is moving from the non-ranked position into the B tier. On a few maps like Triple Dribble, Barley can act as a unique option which like allows a good strong offense by flushing brawlers out with his super. He's not great, but he's viable enough on enough maps to at least justify B tier. Okay guys, up next we've got the bounty tier list. Go ahead and take your screenshot now because it won't stay up for long. Gene is actually replacing Brock as the golden S tier brawler. Now with bounties, brawlers tending to be a lot more squishy and Gene's impressive range with a single pull allowing him to basically create insta-death for most enemies encountered in bounty 
He's just very strong. After successfully executing a kill, Gene Super is likely to reload almost immediately, and even then, he can attack from such a far distance that he can even help finish off brawlers that are just missing just a little bit of HP. Bo is moving from the S tier down into the A tier. Now, uh... Bo has a really respectable DPS and a really solid range. However, he is slightly outranged by a lot of the brawlers that are currently popular in Bounty, and his bombs are very easy to defuse in Bounty, which is like a very passive mode where people are really paying attention. Also, oftentimes his shots require him to be moving one direction, like strafing to the side, and that makes him a much easier target for Gene to pull. Barley's moving from the F tier down into the B tier. Barley serves as a unique niche option on some maps like Excel or Layer Cake. In contrast to Dynamite, whose ability comes from like burst damage, Barley's sustained control and ultimately result in enemies being pushed back, especially if the enemy team does not have a thrower to counter Barley. That means that both Barley and Dynamite are in the B tier for Bounty. Rose is being added into the B tier. Now with the ability to pressure brawlers by using walls to her advantage, Rosa serves as a viable option in Bounty. Now, the fact that she's facing off against really long range brawlers makes her less of a very of a solid option. Um, which is why she's only being added into the B tier. Colt is being removed from the competitive tier list. His low health and difficult to land shots and unimpressive range have all resulted in his removal from uh, the bounty tier list. Pam's also being removed from the B tier. Um, her inability to deal damage from a distance has made her less viable, and uh, she really represents a very easy target for Gene to pull and tends to encourage clumping, and uh, clumping is just not good in bounty, don't do it. Up next guys, we have the siege tier list. Starting off, we have Gene moving from the A tier up into the S tier. Now Gene simply having his pull shapes enemy movement. His ability to quickly create 3v2 situations, break walls, pull a robot away from the Ike or pull an enemy within the Ike's zone, is an, he's just an incredibly powerful option if used the correct way. It does take a little bit of skill to really pull off, but if you can do it, I mean, Gene's great. Penny's moving from the A tier up into the S tier. Penny's turret is just really good. A lot of the new maps that were added into Siege are really excellent for Penny, and she can absolutely impact multiple 1v1 interactions because of her turret. Frank is moving from the A tier up into the S tier. Frank can once again stun the Ike for a long period of time, and while he was strong without it, he's even stronger with that ability. Now Frank also acts as an exceptional counter against Rosa, who is the only melee tank that has a super that does not interrupt his super. And that does make uh, Frank a really decent option. Rosa is starting out right in the S tier, guys, and if you haven't gotten the memo, Rosa is strong. And uh, she's strong in Siege as well. She can deal a huge amount of damage and has a, a decent range for her tankiness. She can also tank uh, the bot's damage, she can tank the Ike with her with her super, she can zone enemies away from a threat, she can offer a lot of control and, and pressure so people can't go in and get the bolts, she's just a great option. Colt is moving from the S tier down into the A tier. Now as Siege has evolved, wall breaker strategies became a thing, and now they're, they've become less prevalent, mostly due to the massive power level difference of the likes of Rosa, Jean, and Carl, two of which represent ranged threats without a consistent means of breaking walls. Now Pam is also moving from the S tier down to the A tier. Once again with those wall breaking strategies becoming less viable, Pam, she just has less moments where she can really shine. When maps are open though, she, she's really, she's a beast. Spike is moving from the S tier down to the A tier as well. With Carl seeing more play, uh, Spike really struggles to hold the same S tier status that he used to. Uh, mostly due to his low health, he's still a great option due to his like control-oriented super and his burst damage against tankier threats. He's just not quite S tier like he was. BB starting out right in the A tier. Now her knockback ability is really what is kind of cool with her in, in in Siege because she's able basically to like come and pick up a, a bolt, knock brawlers away, and then run away very safely. Now once again without her star power, because the, the maps in Siege are bigger than most of the maps, that star power adds a lot of movement, and without it, she would actually be in the B tier. Bo is moving from the A tier down to the B tier, once again, because the wall breaking strategy is less viable. Rico also is being removed from the tier list because of that, and also the fact because he's just, he's just too squishy to be uh, really competitively viable in a mode that requires survivability and sustained control. Jesse is also being removed from the A tier and is being put in the F tier, the non-competitive tier list. The larger maps mean that Jesse just struggles to land her shots as frequently, and her turret is very vulnerable to the current meta, including Carl 
and Barley. Daryl's also being removed from the competitive tier list, he was in the B tier before. Despite him being able to quickly contest with those bolts, Daryl struggles to zone brawlers out with his really less respectable damage and vulnerability to being pinched by enemy brawlers. Woo! That was fun, but it's not over yet, guys. Lastly, we have the overall tier list, guys. In the last version of the tier list, we had almost the same number of brawlers in every single tier. However, in this version, you will notice that the meta is rather lopsided, with only a few brawlers in the S tier and the majority of the brawlers being in the B tier. My guess is it's the fact that we've had a very, very few balance changes, the most very recently, and as more time has progressed, the competitive meta has become more and more defined. And we're starting to see the same brawlers being really excellent in the same types of modes. Now Carl's on the top as an incredibly strong option at the competitive level. Rosa is making her debut with 18 points despite receiving some pretty strong nerfs. <laughs> Before she got some nerfs, whew, she was strong guys. BB's also starting out as a very well well balanced brawler at 10 points. Guys, I also wanted to give a massive thank you to the collaborators that helped me with this tier list discussion. It is with their discussion and the help of Brawl Stats that we're able to bring you the most accurate tier list for every mode in the game. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I certainly love the tier list videos. They're, they're one of my favorites to make. Uh, and the discussion is really fantastic. You guys have no idea how much effort we put into actually making this as accurate as possible. Make sure you subscribe for future updates to the tier list. And for now, guys, this is Karo's time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.